see let me acknowledge uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Martin uh, was with us and uh, Chief Pena, Fire Department, uh, Dr. Purse, oh, yeah. oh, over there, and uh, Director Stephen Williams, uh, as well with the City of Houston Health Department. I want to start off um, by again thanking the Houston uh, Health Department and the Astros Foundation for the incredible work they did to conduct the COVID-19 vaccine super mega uh, site this past Saturday. In fact, we uh, exceeded our initial goal when we set up to 3,600. But in actuality, um, uh, they gave uh, uh, vaccination shots to 3,852 uh, people. So I certainly want to thank uh, Director Williams and his uh, entire staff uh, for the efficient operation at Minute Maid Park and heard from a number of people who found the process to be quite highly efficient and that the people out there were very, uh, very uh, nice and accommodating. I also want to thank Houston uh, Fire EMS uh, personnel, Chief Pena. Thank, uh, thank all of your uh, uh, personnel uh, for the work that they did out there at Minute Maid. The Houston Police and, and the Rodeo Houston Volunteers who also worked together to get people through the process from parking, getting inside the ball stadium, making sure paperwork was completed to getting the vaccine. Uh, and last Friday, uh, the state sent the city of Houston uh, 8,000 do <clears throat> doses of the Moderna vaccine. If you can recall when we met on Thursday, uh, we said that we did not know whether we, we uh, did not know whether or not we were going to get a shipment. Uh, for Saturday, but on Friday morning that shipment came in, uh, 8,000 doses. And on Saturday we used uh, some of that allotment to increase the number of people who could get vaccinated at Minute Maid Park. And that was able, and we were able to go up to 3,852. In fact, once we opened the registration line, uh, 1,000 people, for example, signed up in less than a half hour. So uh, in a few minutes, uh, Houston Health Director Stephen Williams will discuss <clears throat> more of our plans for a, fu for a future COVID-19 vaccination uh, program as I will hope to continue what we did uh, last uh, week, uh, last Saturday. Uh, and then uh, depending on the availability of the, of the vaccines to even open up a uh, north site, that's my hope. Uh, that we could do both a north and a south site, but that will depend on the availability of the vaccine. Uh, so, for example, if that 8,000 shipment that we received on Friday was the advance for this week, uh, then it's, it's kind of going to put us behind the ball. So, uh, and that's what we're seeking clarification, whether or not the 8,000 we got on Friday was the advance of shipment for this week. If, that, if that's the case, then we use some of that shipment for last Saturday because we don't want these vaccines sitting on the shelf. So it's my hope that um, uh, there's another shipment that's coming. And if that's the case, then uh, uh, there can be a north and a south site. We are, we'll plan accordingly, and then we will see what, ha what happens. The reality is that there's a huge demand, and uh, we just need everyone to, uh, to work. Um, uh, with a greater sense of urgency. So we certainly want to work with our federal and our state partners. I know we all want to get it out. Uh, today, the Houston, and let me tell you why. Today, the Houston Health Department is reporting 1,460 cases of COVID-19, bringing the total case count for the city of Houston to 131,035. So in the past week, uh, uh, we've seen how the numbers have been above 1,000. I suspect, and Dr. Purse can speak more to this, that we're pretty much right in the, we're in the middle of the storm and, uh, right now. And I suspect that the next two weeks for the city of Houston will be very, very important um, because now we're getting the cases coming in from the holidays and the aftermath of the holidays. Uh, so again, I'm asking people to, to be very mindful of their behavior uh, that it's very important now to get tested, okay? It's important now to get tested, to know whether or not you have uh, the virus and carrying the virus, especially if you are asymptomatic, because you don't want to spread it to other family members and friends and 
employees. So please get tested. Please get tested. Um, and then keep these masks on and wash your hands and engage in the social distance uh, distancing because, you know, we are right in the middle of the storm right now. And I suspect we'll be in the middle of this storm for the next next two weeks. So the next two weeks will be very telling uh, because what we're needing now is to flatten out and then start bringing these numbers down. In terms of the hospitalization, uh, there are more than 2,100 people in our hospitals. Uh, and as you know, at the peak of the storm during the summer, uh, it was a little bit more than 2,400. So now we're a little bit more than 2,100. We're moving closer to that where we were during the summer. So again, please, please check your behavior um, and uh, help us to flatten this curve. The total number of COVID-19 related deaths in Houston increased by three uh, to 1,600. Uh, uh, so that's, you know, what I'm finding in interesting is that uh, the, the death number is still modest. And again, I'll defer to Dr. to Dr. Purse on that, uh, but the number is increasing by three. Just, that brings us to 1,600. The rolling average positivity rate is 17.4%, uh, which is up from last year. So that's a significant number, 17.4 is the positivity rate. So that number is moving in the wrong direction. The number of hospital admissions moving in the wrong direction, and we need to be very mindful of our, of, of our behavior. Uh, today, I received word that another City of Houston employee uh, has died from COVID-19 complications. Uh, Jose Rubio uh, was a 27-year employee of Public Works. He had been uh, battling the virus since mid-December, and I want to send my condolences to his loved ones and to other uh, families across Houston whose lives have been changed as a result of the virus. So let me ask you to um, remember the family uh, uh, Jose uh, uh, Rubio, keep them in your prayers. Uh, Jose Rubio, a 27-year employee of Public Works with the City of Houston, and we appreciate his service and will be praying for his family. Sadly, too many lives have been lost and too many people have fallen ill. We know a lot of this is preventable if people would continue to wear their masks avoid large, large crowds and practice social distancing, wash their hands frequently and get tested. And then let me say something else. When people are going out to lunch or dinner or breakfast, restaurants, um, let me remind people that it's important for you to put on your mask. Keep those masks on except when you're eating you know, or drinking. Uh, but once you have, you know, before you eat, before the meal comes, you know, keep the mask on. Uh, when the meal does come, you know, of course, you got to take your mask off to eat. But after you finish your entree, while you're still sitting around and talking, put those masks back on, okay? So it's just important that we adhere to all of uh, the health protocols that we talked about in 2020. Uh, now let me, let me pause uh, first. Let me bring up, uh, well, let me bring up Director Williams first uh, so he can talk about uh, uh, these uh, north and south locations, or at least the hope of them, uh, assuming that we get the we get uh, necessary allotment. I do want to thank him as I bring him up. I want to thank Director Williams for his outstanding uh, service and his health department employees, because they did. I mean, they have done just a terrific job under some very stressful uh, circumstances, and I really want to thank them because on Saturday, I don't think anybody in the country. Uh, in one single day, even came close to 3,852 uh, vaccinations in a single day. So let me thank him so very much, and I know he's working very, uh, going without, you know, to try to make uh, Saturday even bigger uh, than this previous Saturday. Uh, Director Stephen Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as all of you are noting, I, I get my directions very publicly, usually. <laughs> At, at this dish, but I'm taking those in. Uh, our, the doses that we've received today is 22,150. We've administered 14,297. We've also transferred uh, 1,900 doses to in individuals to ensure, uh, to other providers, ensuring that there was adequate access at various locations throughout. 
want to let everybody know that in addition to the Minute Maid locations that we had this weekend, we've also been uh, administering vaccine at the Bayou Events Center, our, our Northside Health Clinic, La Nueva Casa de Amigos uh, Health Clinic, which is in near Northside Sharpstown Health Center and also Sunnyside Health Centers. We're not making additional appointments at this time, but as uh, uh, slots become available, uh, similar to what we did this Saturday, we will open it up. We know that once those appointments are opened up, that they will go very quickly. As the mayor indicated, we opened up a thousand slots on Saturday and in less than 15 minutes, those thousand slots were in fact filled. This is very consistent with what the uh, Texas Department of State Health Services is wanting. Uh, they have designated us as a vaccine hub, which indicates that their expectation is that we uh, administer uh, a, a large quantity uh, of vaccines. Uh, as supplies are, are received, our plan is to, in fact, Mayor, have a north and south locations where we can actually convert those to mega locations on, on, on the weekend, in addition to our four health clinics. Uh, shortly before coming here, I was talking to our staff, and as vaccine become available, we also want to ensure that we locate providers that in communities that are socioeconomically challenged and actually ensure that those providers have vaccine. It is important, yes, to get out vaccine, but it's important for us to look at equity as a value as a city. And so therefore, we will be operating uh, sites that are mega sites, uh, our clinic operations and strategic sites that are in communities where we know that there are high positivity rates and, and other challenges. Also, we also expect to have additional vaccines coming in. I'm hoping by the end of the week and with those vaccines, we'll be able to meet the mayor's current challenge, and whether that be operating another mega site at Minute May or being able to bring up two sites, one north and one south. But that's dependent on locating the sites and also having the vac vaccine available. I want to also express my gratitude to our staff who within less than 24 hours contacted 3,400 individuals, ensured that they brought those folks in on uh, Saturday, in addition to opening up our scheduling system to another thousand people. It's not every day that you get a staff that's able to pivot that, that quickly. And at 10.30 Saturday night, they were still working. So to me, that is the essence of public service. And so I want to express my gratitude to them and all of the staff in the fire department and the police department that were very instrumental in administering vaccines uh, and, and working out logistics from the police department standpoint. It was even a point at which the police department came inside and helped us with the logistics that were going on. Uh, what we saw was people that were extremely grateful. Uh, we see that a number of folks want this vaccine, and so we want to make sure that we provide them access. Thanks, and, and, and again, I also want to acknowledge the uh, Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo volunteers who also stepped in by the hundreds to help us out uh, quite a bit. Let me just say this is day seven of, since I took that vaccine, and I'm still fine, still good. So uh, again, let me encourage people when you get the opportunity to take it, uh, please, please do that. Now let me bring up a Dr. Person. Thank you, Mayor. And um, so Stephen gave you the good news, now I get to be Dr. Downer and give you the, some of the bad news. So I want to with this a little bit of context and bring people's attention. The slide you see in front of you is a slide representing the hospitalizations of people. Now this slide is for hospitals which are in Harris County only. And you will see that that peak on the left center of the screen is back in July. Now, off to the far right is our current situation. And you can see that the numbers have risen dramatically and we are just about at the levels that we were in July. Now in July, we crested the peak. Uh, at this point, because our positivity rate is so high, that predicts what's going to happen in the future. So unfortunately, I'm afraid I, I don't think that this is we're ready to crest. I, as you said, we're you said you're in the center of the storm, and being from Texas, that makes me think there might be an eye of the storm with some calm. I don't think the storm has an eye to it, unfortunately. So at this point, we have to expect that the situation uh, will unfortunately worsen within the hospitals, and that's important because right now 
when we talk to our partners at the Texas Medical Center, at least a third of the patients in the intensive care units are COVID diagnosed or patients dealing with the complications of COVID. And they are beyond their capacity for their phase one, their standard ICU capacity, and they are into their surge already. And a fairly good percentage of that as well. So I don't say this to scare people. I say this in order that we pay close attention. Now, Mayor, you did point out something, and I want to draw it, it shows here on the graph, that the rate of people who are getting ill and being hospitalized is rising at a greater rate than those that are in the ICU. And that's really due to the credit of the hospital folks. They are learning how to better manage folks, and there's a smaller percentage of them which are winding up in the intensive care unit. And we're seeing a smaller apparent, now there's a huge lag with death reporting, but I'm hoping that we'll see a little bit of a decreased death rate as well. But I don't want that to detract from the fact that if you're sick enough to require hospitalization in a hospital system, which is beyond capacity, you are mighty sick, right? So the hospitals are sending people home with home health care adjuncts, like home oxygen, home health nurses that are going that they wouldn't normally do. So hospitals are really at a very strained position right now. We need to thank the doctors and nurses, respiratory therapists, x-ray technicians, all the folks in the hospital, because they are, once again, doing a tremendous amount of work. And also, I just want to, you know, one quick thing is that with the Houston Rodeo volunteers, many of those folks are medically trained. They are the doctors and nurses that work in the hospital. And on their precious off time, they are stepping up to help their community too. So I just want to point that out and say thank you to them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Furs and Chief Pena. Thank you, Mayor. I want to first express my condolences to the Rubio family, a worker for Public Works who tragically lost his life to this virus. Our condolences go out to them, their family, and certainly the Houston Public Works family. Mayor, I want to thank all the staff that's up here, really, and your team for the incredible work that we've been doing and they've been doing in getting these vaccines and getting the word out and doing our part to ensure that our community is vaccinated. Our firefighters, 226 today, are in quarantine. We surpassed the last week's record of positive coronavirus firefighters with 60 this week. So it's incredibly important to understand that the virus is endemic in our community. It's present, and we need to do our part to ensure that we're doing everything to slow the spread. I want to reemphasize what the mayor has said up here earlier. Get tested. Get tested. Get tested. It's incredibly important that we get tested and we know who's infected and take the proper precautions. It takes about, even if you just visit it with your family members during the holidays, it takes about two to three weeks to start seeing the symptoms. It's incredibly important for us to get tested at this point and to do our part. Wash your hands. Keep your distance. Get tested. And when able, get the vaccine. Right now we're vaccinating the most, I guess, the people that are most at risk. And it's going to take some time to get the rest of the community vaccinated. But in the meantime, there's things that we can do. And we're, again, going to reemphasize what we've been saying all along. Proper distancing. Wear your mask. Proper hygiene. Getting tested. That's going to help us stem and flatten the spread. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Chief. Chief Acevedo is not here, but let me just say, as of this afternoon, HPD has 298 officers out due to COVID with positive tests or in quarantine. And another 39 of HPD civilian employees are out for a total of 337 HPD employees away from the workplace. And then just a quick update on the direct assistance that the city of Houston gave. You know, we've been giving out checks to 1,200, checks in the amount of 1,200 to people who qualified in direct assistance. All of those dollars have now been issued. Those checks have been issued. A total of 16,922 checks in the amount of $1,200 went out to different individuals. That's 16,922 checks went out for a total amount of $20,366,400. So we'll do that. And then lastly, I think we just want to make note, some people have asked, when it comes to that second dose, that second vaccine, do they have to contact HPD? 
and uh, HVD, uh, the Houston Health Department. And the answer is no. The Houston Health Department will be contacting them. Is that yes? So you don't have to con you don't have to contact H the Houston Health Department for that second dose. Uh, the Houston Health Department uh, will automatically be contacting you and and giving you your, those instructions. Having said that, oh, we'll stop and we're open to questions to to any of us that's up here. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. Uh, the governor announced 28 vaccine hubs statewide, three of the largest here in the Houston area. Will residents of surrounding ca counties be eligible to get vaccinated at those sites? Yeah, we uh, look, uh, I can remember during those during the days after Harvey, we pulled on resources from inside the city of Houston and outside the city of Houston. The same thing will be applying to the, to the sites here. Um, will there be plans to make the process a little bit more smoother or to educate the public? I know a lot of people in the community don't know if they should wait on their uh, provider, their hospital, or go to one of these sites. And so maybe that's stopping and preventing a lot of people from getting the vaccine sooner. If you want to okay. Yes, I, uh, there, there is some confusion, and I think it's related to the vaccine availability. Because the reality is, is that uh, pharmacies, uh, doctors' offices, uh, multiple practices, hospitals, health departments, all will be a part of a system that will be eventually uh, vaccinating folks. But because of the lack of availability of vaccine and the need to prioritize, initially hospitals got it, then they expanded uh, that, that provider group a little bit, which, and that was really determined by what uh, individuals, providers put on those applications. And so I believe that this, it, it will smooth out and that vaccine will eventually be available literally at your uh, corner pharmacy or in your community health clinic or federally qualified health center. Is there a timeline on that? The timeline is related to the vac vaccine availability. I think everybody's really frustrated with it. Uh, we really want it to happen now, uh, but remember the, the vaccines just came out, you know, a few weeks ago and they, they, they have a produ pro production schedule and we're having to really respond to that production schedule. Uh, I have a question from Fox. DHS allocated 8,000 vaccines, vaccines to the Houston Health Department this week for what they call a vaccine hub. How do you plan to disperse these and how do you make sure that all of the vaccines are used? Uh, most of them are already gone. All of our appointments for next week are already filled, which means that the vaccine will be gone before our, our, our ne next supply. Uh, we actually got uh, the vaccine a lot sooner than we expected it. We expected it today. That's why we, in a, in a very hurried fashion, put together that mega site at uh, Minute Maid Park where we gave out a little under 4,000 vaccines. Question from, oh, let me, I'm sorry. Let me elaborate, elaborate on that even more so that it, it, it would become clear. Because, you know, the, the, the state health department, they're reporting that they, for example, 8,000 to the city of Houston, 8,000 to Harris County, I think 11,000 to Methodist. The, that 8,000 we received on Friday morning and we used some of that 8,000 at our mega site on Saturday because we're not, I mean, as soon as we get it, the goal is to put it, to put those shots in people's arms. So some of that 8,000 we've already used. We need, a, quite frankly, we need another 8,000 uh, this week. And that's why we are being a little bit hesitant on even announcing, for example, two mega sites for this coming weekend because we don't know whether or not we're gonna get another shipment this week, or whether or not that 8,000 that they sent to us on Friday was intended for the entire, this entire week. If that's the case, uh, we're gonna run out. So, you know, our goal is to set up two mega sites, for example, on Saturday. Uh, we'll make the plans for it, uh, but whether or not they will be activated will, be, will depend on whether or not we get additional shipments. Because from that 8,000 on Friday, we used some on Saturday. And then, of course, you know, we'll continue to, to provide shots Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So. Question from KHOU. Given the large number of vaccine appointments already booked through January, 
how many doses do you need from the state to feel comfortable opening uh, another mega site? Oh, that's as many as they can send us. It's hard for me to answer that question because my boss is here. Uh, <laughs> but, but the reality is that uh, after our conversation today, uh, I, I'm sure that we, we can look at, you know, 16 or more thousand vaccines given the model, but that requires, you know, staffing. Part of our plan actually in, involves uh, subcontracting out the staffing for some, some of the sites, which will give us expanded capacity. And so given the model I was looking at before I came here, we can almost uh, quadruple uh, what, what we're doing now. And let me just say, you know, Dr. Dr. Peter Hortez has said that uh, in order for us to get to where we need to be, uh, we need to be fascinating you know, 10 to 15,000 a day. 10 to 15,000 a day. So um, we simply want to make sure on our end that we are ramping up to put the infrastructure in place, and then the more we can get, the more we can, we can distribute. I have another question from Fox. Houston Methodist received the most vaccines this week, roughly 11,000. Will the city be working with them in dispersing these? No, uh, and the reason is because Methodist has been very aggressive and getting out the, the, the vaccine. The reason that they were named as a, a mega site in addition to the two health departments is because of number one, how they filled out their provider form, which meant that they were willing to go outside of their system to vaccinate other folks. For example, they vaccinated some of the folks, uh, EMS personnel within the fire department, some of the people that were within their system, as well as their 1B patients. So again, Methodist is doing 11,000 and they've got a, a particular clientele that they will be addressing. Uh, Harris County got 8,000, City of Houston got 8,000, we got ours on Friday morning. So, um, and other providers, other hospitals are wanting more. You know, we would love to have more. So I, however many of the feds in the state can provide us, we, we can utilize. That's a huge demand in the City of Houston for this virus, I mean for this um, uh, vaccine right now. Another question from KHU. Can you walk us through the process of, for patients at these future super sites? For example, parking, wait times, observations after getting the shot, kind of what they can expect when they go to one of these sites. I can tell you based on uh, what took place on Saturday, the wait time was not very long at all. Uh, we were able to, to get through and, and, va and vaccinate um, over 3,800 people on Saturday alone. And so they were already pre-registered, so to uh, pre-registered. Uh, they came in. There were three different pods set up. We used over 60 different nurse, 60 nurses and EMS uh, workers. Um, we had hundreds of uh, volunteers from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. I think if you talk to the overwhelming percentage of people who went through that system, they would tell you it didn't take long at all. Highly efficient. People were very nice. We've gotten a number of emails and a number of responses from people on social media and others who said it, it just wasn't long at all. But people who were disabled or who were, um, had problems walking around, for example, they were on the first level. We made it very easy for them. Uh, even with the cold weather on Saturday, they, uh, the uh, Astros put up you know, these portable heaters to make it as comfortable for them. And then on the second level, there were two additional identical pods uh, set up, so three different stations, and literally over 60 different nurses that were providing the shots. Highly, highly efficient. The, the mayor is talking about early on. It did get longer later on in the day. Uh, what we have worked out is a more efficient system, though. Uh, there, there was an extended wait time later on in the day. Director Steven, why are you are still on the podium? Before we get 100 questions from uh, I'm Fox, asking okay, for the poll. Director Steven, let me ask my question. To you. Director, um, since the health department is going to be a hub, can you talk about if there will be any physical changes to accommodate for this? Uh, if, if we went back to Minute Maid, basically the layout would be similar to what the, the, the mayor described. 
uh, there are some efficiencies that we believe that we can implement in order to make that process go, go smoother. I think if you looked at the layout that would, it was at the Bayou Center, just because it was one way in and one way out, it, it, it was smoother. Uh, although uh, the capacity there was was a lot uh, uh, was smaller. Director Stephen, why you're still on the podium? You you and the mayor have talked about the consignment that you got, and then you keep having this subtle statement of we have given some. Uh, we will need to know who is taking that sum and why we have that outlet for that sum going to where it's going. And the follow-up question is this issue of people making this vaccination programming as if it's mysterious. Now we have 8,000 that was sent to Houston. Houston is part of Harris County. Is Houston going to get part of the 8,000 that have been sent to Harris County, different from the 8,000 sent to Houston? Houston has about 2.5 million people. What is 8,000 uh, vials of vaccine in a week? And why do we keep having this confusion of, is it what the mayor said today, uh, the, the governor said today that came in, or some vaccine that was sent in last week? Can we get this clarification on why there is this confusion all over the place? Well, all of this really points back to a vaccine shortage. You're right, 8,000 vaccines and a population of uh, 2.5 million uh, people is not a whole lot, but it's what we have. Uh, I was on a call today and one of the statements that I made is that we need to kind of work to quiet the noise. Everybody knew that the vaccine was going to be rolled out very slowly initially, just because of manufacturing and, and, and distribution. We in Texas did something different than other parts of the country. We decided to open up that second tier, that 1B, to 8 million people. In other parts of the country, they decided to pick sectors that they were going to, to vaccinate. Our committee decided to go that way because we wanted to hit the individuals that were most vulnerable. And as I said to the committee, we have to embrace some of the confusion because we made the decision, although I support it, because uh, if you know that 70% of the individuals that die from COVID are over 65 years old, then you want to prevent death. And so that was the decision that we made. I embrace that, but it is confusing in terms of, of, of getting it out just because of, of vaccine supply. And to your point about the city and the county, they get 8,000, we get 8,000, but we, what we did early on is work with the county to really kind of divide up the work, which uh, we, we have been doing with, with testing also. So that part is not confusing. You know, we operate some programs that are the same, but the jurisdiction is very much different, and that's how we divide it up the workload for vaccine administration. I, I, I said Houston is part of Harris County. Are we expecting to get for Houston some of the 8,000 that was sent to Harris County? No, I want them to do their own work. <laughs> we don't. We can't do it all as a city. The so we divide it up the work. They, we, they should do their own work, but we are part of the, the, the Harris County. If every city, if every little village that is part of Harris County takes this approach that the local government of Houston is taking, then there is just going to be confusion over the place. That's why we keep asking this question. Well, I think it's, it's, it's divided. It's kind of divided up. In Houston, there are 2.3 million Houstonians. And then if you factor in all of Harris County, you're talking about another 4 million people. So that's why, you know, you got, you got Houston, which is a part of Harris County. So um, we're going to take the 8,000 that we receive and provide it to well, quite frankly, it's not just Houstonians. We kind of open it up to anybody. And the same thing with Harris County. So, and Houston and Harris County, we work collaboratively uh, because we, you know, we want to move this vaccine out as quickly as possible. I know that. Uh, look, I, I wish we had a million doses that we could we could provide because the demand is so huge. Uh, there is some confusion when you talk about these hubs and the amounts that are being given because the dates don't necessarily align with the press statements. 
And I want to be very clear on that. And so when the, when the press statements coming from the state says 8,000 to Houston, 8,000 Harris County, 11,000 to Methodist, bear in mind that when you get your 8,000, like last week on Friday, it doesn't quite align so it becomes confusing. If we wish that that was this seamless integrated system, for example, where somebody could, could go online and, 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 and look at uh, the closest provider to you any place in Houston Harris County and you could go to that particular location for your vaccine. Uh, the system is not that sophisticated and so it, it does become a little frustrating when there's a huge demand at, at, and, and a very limited supply. But we're going to work through it. We're going to work through it. And it's going to require all of the different partners, state, federal, local, uh, to be working together to make it happen. Any additional questions? Yes, sir. Mayor, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the, I guess, the, the success you had with the mega, mega site at mid May this weekend. Talk about sort of where that fits in with the vision you have about vaccine distribution in the city. Sort of, did that give you sort of a window as to? How successful you think that that effort can be, and what do you think are going to be the big? Is it? Is there, I don't know if there's something else besides vaccine allotment amounts as far as what what are the biggest obstacles to achieving that? Yeah, and a good question. I, uh, what I what what we witnessed on Saturday does indicate that we can do mass distribution in a very efficient in a very efficient way. Uh, so for Saturday, for the uh, city of Houston's health department, for example, to vaccinate it. Uh, 3,852 at one mega site, okay, uh, does indicate what can take place, for example, if there are multiple mega sites. Uh, and if we, for example, if, if there was one on the north side, one on the south side, and people didn't have to drive nearly as far, let's say you could have, we could, let's say 3,000 could have been issued at one, 3,000 could have been issued at another, you could easily have done 6,000 or more. So it does say if we have if we have the supply, and if we have the supply early enough where we can really ramp up based on that supply, then I think uh, easily in a single day in the city of Houston, you know, we could take that 3,800 and multiply it by two uh, if there was more than one site. But it does require us to know with some degree of certainty. Uh, when that shipment will come in and how much we will be receiving, that way we'll know how to properly plan. Because it's not just the nurses and the EMS workers who are providing the vaccine. We need to know ahead of time on volunteers. Okay, because volunteers represent a critical component, HPD, staffing, traffic management. All of those entities need to be alerted ahead of time so that they can properly schedule as well. But there is no question, for example, if we knew that, if I knew today, if we knew today that another 8,000 were going to be coming in before the end of the week, uh, then we could properly plan for multiple uh, mega sites for this coming Saturday. Okay. Anything, anything else? Okay, thank you all so very, very much, and uh, we'll talk soon.